Notice what he says in this verse. Notice how he words it. He says, my people are what? All right, three of y'all heard it. Let's read it again. My people are what? Destroyed. Destroyed. You see that right there? Now, why are they destroyed? Listen to what he says. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. All right, here's the thing about life. Many times in life, we have this attitude. Don't tell me I don't want to know. Y'all ever said that? Uh huh. And, and then here's what happens. And then the, the case or the situation or something uh, gets the better of you. And then here's what your exact words are. If I only would have... If I only would have known. Well, let me tell you this. We have an enemy. And his name is Satan. And we're going to talk about him this morning. But we've got to know who our enemy is. We've got to know his schemes, his devices, and, and what he does. And so that's what we're going to talk about probably the next two mornings. I sent all these verses to Will, and Will said, there's no way you'll get through all this. I said, yeah, probably not. Y'all have seen me get stuck on one verse forever. But the point is, this morning, I want to show you biblically, not Jonathan, biblically what the Bible says about Satan. And about who he is, what he is, where he came from, um, what his plan is. And so let's read Hosea 4, 6 one more time. And, and then we're going to start talking about him. Listen to what it says. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no more priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Notice right here what he's saying. If you reject, and here's, here's what we're going to base it on. If you reject the knowledge of the Bible, do not be surprised when your marriage is falling apart. And then don't be surprised when your kids are going astray. Because you have rejected what God's Word says. Now, I want to say this too. Don't always just assume the preacher is right. All right? Listen, there are people all over the world right now who do not open their Bible, who do not read their Bible, who come to a church or, or whatever ch kind of church you want to call it, and they listen to a man, in some cases now even a woman, give the word, and they don't even know if they're giving the true word. If you really know this book right here, then you, you know what's amazing? I have the same Bible that you got. I don't get a preacher's edition. Did y'all know that? I wish they had something like that. But I've got the same Bible that you have. So there is no reason why you shouldn't know your Bible is good or better than me. There's no reason. We all have the same Bible. But what you've got to know is this book right here is knowledge. It is wisdom. And it is the Word of God. It will speak to you. And notice how he says at the end of that verse, he says, I will also forget thy children. Why are our children going to be lost? Because they don't know the truth either. Why don't they know the truth? Because we as a parent failed them. We didn't teach them the truth. So keep that in mind. Always remember that. My people, notice what he says. It ain't that they're hurt. It ain't that they're broken a, a little bit. It ain't that they had a bad day. He says they are destroyed. You know what destruction is? It's where you declare it completely destroyed. You throw it to the graveyard. You burn it. It is no good. Beyond repair. That's what happens when Satan gets a hold to our lives, to our marriages, and to our kids. He destroys them. Remember what Jesus said in John 10.10. 10, the thief comes but to kill, steal, and what? Destroy. He wants to destroy our lives. But Jesus said, but I come... That you may have abundance and more abundance. Will, what you waving at me? Are you waving at me? Uh oh. Somebody accept. No, don't, no, don't accept. No. Anyway, keep preaching. Let Will walk, walk. You might have to walk down. I think the batteries are getting weak on that remote. All right, first off, we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28. We're going to see. Who he is. Now we'll be covering some more right here in Ezekiel. Um, but listen to what the Bible says about this um, man by the, or this, this angel, fallen angel, Satan. 
Ezekiel chapter 28, here's what he says. He says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Start in verse 13, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 28, start in verse 13. He says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, and the barrel, and the onyx, and jasper, and sapphire, and the emerald, and carbuncle, and gold, and the workmanship of thy tabrets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou wast created. He says, Thou art an anointed cherub that covereth, and I have sent thee so that thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Notice what he says, verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. And that's, that's a very good description of who Satan is. Satan was at the right hand of God up there on the holy mountain. Um, many believe, and I, I, we're going to touch on this a whole lot more, that he may have even been the musical um, angel that was singing music and praise to God 24-7 right there by the um, mercy or by the seat, um, hit, um, Jesus' throne right there, in, or God's throne, golly, I got tongue tied there, y'all. Throne there in heaven, what John saw in, in Revelation chapter 4. That throne that he saw, that, that Satan would have been one of those, Lucifer would have been one of those sitting there, uh, uh, just um, singing and praising God 24 7. And the Bible says right here how beautiful he is. You see that? It gives these stones of beauty of the things that he was um, created with. Listen to what it says back at verse 13. He was covered. Uh, every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, and the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbon, and gold. The workmanship, he says, of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou was created. In his creation, he was created this great angel of beauty. All right? And he reigned right there with God. And notice what he also says right here, verse 15. He says, you were perfect in your ways until, until you went wayward. Now, I want to say this before we go any further. Satan is real. Can I get amen? amen. He is real. And, and you're getting some description of him right here. But let me, let me say something before we go one step further. You don't have to fear Satan. You know that, right? You do not have to fear him. Now, if you're unsaved, I would be scared of him because you know what you are? You're an open door to him. But as a born-again child of God, you are sealed. You know, matter of fact, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you and Satan knows there ain't nothing he can do to you. But here's the thing about Satan that you've got to know. You need to respect him. It's just like a gun. You don't fear a gun, but you respect a gun. You use great caution when you're dealing with a gun. Well, you use great caution on a daily basis knowing that the Bible teaches that Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so with that mindset, let me tell you this. Don't fear him. Don't be scared um, to walk out the door. Don't be scared. I had a lady, and I think I told you all this, uh, at Homeless Ministry. And I was getting, they said, John, will you come pray with this lady? I said, absolutely. So I go over there to pray with her. But while I'm um, getting ready to pray with her, I go to put my hand on her. And we get in a circle, put our hands on each other. And she says, I don't know if you want to touch me, preacher. I said, I said what do you mean? And she says, anybody that's ever got close to me, bad things, bad karma comes upon them. And I said, look, you don't worry about Jonathan Pike. Good Lord's got him. I said, listen, we need to pray over you. And I put my hand and we pray. And I didn't have a fear in the world praying over her. I am not scared of Satan. I'm not scared of a demon possessing me and bad um, voodoo and all this stuff. I, that don't bother me. I'm not even that superstitious. I, I'm not, I walk under a ladder. I, a, a black cat walking in front of me don't bother me. I ain't finna throw salt over my shoulder. I don't care about all that stuff. Um, but here's the thing. But Satan is real. And Satan does torment. Satan does haunt. Satan does do all these things. You don't have to fear him, but you must respect him. The Bible teaches, um, listen right here in Revelation 12, 12, what the Bible says about him. It says, Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Hear what he says? 
and, the, and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. He is dwelling amongst us right now. And listen to me, he ain't our best friend. He hates us. He hates everything about us because Jesus loves us. And who did Jesus die for? You and me. All right. And why did he die for you and me? Because he loves us unconditionally. He didn't die for the angels. And so what does Satan want to do? He wants to steal as many of you and me away as he can and then destroy us is what he ultimately wants to do. Listen what the Bible also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. He talks about we've got to stay a step ahead of Satan. We have to be prepared in knowing that Satan is out there seeking whom he may devour. Listen to what it says at verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now you know what ignorance is? Let, let, I'm going to give you all the definition of ignorance and you'll probably never forget it this way. Um, how many of y'all know who Tarzan is? Me Tarzan, me swing through the jungle, right? Me like Jane, amen, all right? Y'all know Tarzan, all right, here we go. Tarzan comes into the city. Tarzan been living in the jungle his whole life. He walks into a kitchen. He goes over there, the, the, the uh, oven is on. All right, and he goes over and he touches the stove. Ow! All right, do you know why he got burnt? Ignorance. He did not know. He's never seen a stove before. So he is ignorant to what a stove does and that it can get hot and that it can burn you. All right? So that's ignorance. Now stupid is he comes in a second time and he sees the stove and he touches it again and he gets burned again. That's stupid. That's what a lot of us do a lot of times. Amen. You know that it's going to hurt you. You know you, you say it before you do it. Hey, y'all watch this. That's how we do it around here. But you do it, you say, Lord, please protect me. I don't, oh, please, dear Lord. And you're scared to, and you do it anyway. And then when something bad happens, and then everybody's like, you stupid, you knew, right? But what is ignorance? Ignorance is you don't know. Lack of knowledge, okay? Paul said he sinned in ignorance. And, and, but now he knows, all right? Big difference. But here's just like back to Hosea 4, 6. My people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. My people are destroyed, not perish. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So the point is right here, we can't be ignorant when it comes to the enemy. Do you remember uh, many of us that played sports, especially football? What did we do throughout the week, all week long? What did we watch? Films. Now, I don't know what y'all watch nowadays. We had VCR tapes back in the day. And some of y'all may not even know what that is, kids. But we would, had coaches that would go to other games and watch the team that we're getting ready to play. And they would film it. And they would come back and they would watch it and they would study the other team. Why? Because that's the next enemy. That's the next person and team we got to play. Well, right here. Notice what your Bible, your Bible, not Jonathan, your Bible is teaching you. It is teaching you lest Satan should get an advantage of us. How will he get an advantage of us? By being unprepared. Why, when most all of y'all, I'm, I'm going to guess all of y'all, come in here just a few minutes ago, why did you lock the car or your truck before you come in? In case somebody breaks in it. All right, you're trying to keep them out. You're trying to keep the enemy out. Some of you have gotten in such a habit of it that you do it and you don't even realize it. Uh, y'all, if y'all ever come in behind me and you can't get in because I've locked the door, please forgive me. It's just a habit. I, I walk in our front door, I lock the door. I get out of the car, I lock the car. It's a habit. I get it from my dad. My dad's the same way. But the point is, why do we even have locks? Because we know there, there is an enemy out there that wants to break into our house and rob us and potentially hurt our family. But yet, we are not preparing our homes against Satan. You see that? You're more worried about a man breaking into your home than you are Satan destroying your home. And the Bible teaches right here, we've got to be prepared. Lest, we are, uh, uh, lest Satan should get an advantage over us. We are Ignorant, not ignorant of his device. We know that the Bible teaches that he wants to not just hurt us, not just cause us to have a bad day. He wants to destroy our lives. We know that. 
but yet are we preparing ourselves? What good is it when God says, put on the whole armor of God? What good is it to leave the helmet off? Well, it's all good as long as you don't get hit from here up. But that one blow is what will kill you. Satan, and look, you know what Satan's looking at? He studied our armor. He studied what we've put on and what we don't put on on a daily basis. One thing about him, we're going to talk about this more in a minute, he is patient, very patient. He said, I can't get you today, but I got you tomorrow. And if I can't get you tomorrow, the next day's coming. I got time. You see, he's patient. We're impatient. And yet, right here, the Bible is teaching one of the greatest lessons you can ever remember is that he is trying to get an advantage on us. We've got to stay a step ahead. It's mama and daddy, we especially have to stay a step ahead for our babies. We've got to remember that when Satan's trying to tear our marriage apart and trying to tear other things apart, he's trying to get to our babies. He wants to destroy our babies. Notice what the Bible also tells us. James chapter 4 verse 7. He says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist who? The devil. And he will flee from you. You see that? Submit to God. Now, remember when Jesus was being tempted by him. When Jesus finally looked at him, he said, You've got to get. Notice what Satan did. He left. When Jesus spoke, Satan didn't argue, he didn't gripe, he didn't complain, he didn't, he didn't even say, you ain't got no right to tell me to leave. He left. He knows who Jesus is. Notice the demons too. I'm going to throw demons in with some of this. Because they're his right hand um, workers. Remember that when the demons, when Jesus would come up and somebody would be demon possessed, and remember what they would say, oh son of God, why are you here? Are you here to torment us? They know him. And it's sad when a demon knows Jesus better than we know Jesus. Ain't that sad a lot of times? But here's what's happening. They knew that they had no power against Jesus. They knew it. You see, they're not ignorant. You think about the Word of God. They know the Word of God. What do you think Satan uses to trick you? The Word of God. He twists it. So that you're like, man, that does sound a lot like the Bible. But is that the Bible? And, and yeah, now you're questioning yourself. But notice right here. Submit to God. Surrender to God. And then resist Satan. And he's got to go. In the name of Jesus, he's got to go. James 2, 19. Listen to this. He says, Thou believest that there is one God? You are doing well. Y'all believe there's one God? You're doing well. But the devils also believe and tremble. You see that? They know he's real too. They're scared to death of him too. They just hope you don't realize the God that's for you. That's what they. That, that, that's their goal. Their go, Their goal. Ain't it amazing that when something bad happens, cancer, um, storms, bad things happen, who do people blame? God. Why don't they blame Satan? Who come into the garden and destroyed? You know, we don't want to blame the woman. It wasn't Eve's fault. If Satan wouldn't have got her that day, he would have kept coming. And eventually she'd have gave in if, if he wouldn't have started on Adam. And then eventually Adam probably would have gave in. And you say, well, I wouldn't have. Yes, you would. That's why you do the dumb things we do. Amen. We would have all failed. But here's the point. You believe in him? That's good. That's good. They believe too. They give more respect to God than we give to God. See that? They tremble. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to start on number one. We're going to do where did Satan come from. But I, I do want y'all to know while we, I give you this verse. It's Isaiah chapter 14. Here's what I want to do. I want to tell you this. Out of 66 books in the Bible. Listen to this. 66 of these books in this book. 26 refer to Satan. Jesus himself spoke of the devil being real some 15 times. Jesus did. 
But the Bible mentions Satan some 26 other times out of 66 books. He's mentioned in 26 of them. That's how um, much he's mentioned. But first off, where did he come from? We've talked about that a little bit, but listen what it says. Verse 12, Isaiah 14, verse 12. Who, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? You see that there? Where did he come from? Heaven. He come from heaven. And I want to tell you something else. We're going to talk about this more in a minute. When, if Satan walked in here right now, you know what he would probably do? You would probably think he was an angel. You would probably look at him like an angel. Thinking you're looking at an angel. Well, guess what you are? Looking at an angel. But a fallen one. He does not come to you with the old pitchfork, pointed tail, and horns, and breathing fire. Matter of fact, if he would have come to Eve like that in the garden, it would have scared her to death. She'd have took off running. Matter of fact, the Bible says he come in the form of a serpent. Now, how many of y'all ladies are scared of snakes? He wouldn't have got you then. But, but that's what the Bible says. But where did he come from? Heaven. Look what it says. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Now, I believe right there that morning represents also that he is bright. He reflects a lot of light. Matter of fact, when you see when John, in uh, Revelation 4, uh, when John is looking at the throne of God, he can't even hardly look at it for the brightness. Well, if Satan had all those precious stones about him... He, you ever seen a, a sun when it hits a certain glass or prisms as we call it and makes that rainbow glare color thing? That's probably what it was like to look on Satan at this point. And that's why it says sun of the morning. All right, sun of the bright light, the, the, the glory morning light. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Notice that right there. How are you cut down? How could somebody so great... Be cut down to so low. And then, notice what he's done. He has weakened nations. He is what has destroyed nations. He is the reason our world is in war right now. And why people are killing people right now. But that's what his job is, is to destroy God's greatest creation, you and me. Verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Now, the stars of God represent the angels in heaven. But what is Satan, what was he wanting to do? He was wanting to get above God. He was wanting to be God. Notice this, and we're going to talk about this theme more, that everything about Satan mocks God. Remember, in the, in the uh, tribulation period, you have Satan acting as God, the Antichrist, Antichrist acting as Jesus, and then the um, false prophet, which I believe is AI, I've told y'all that, is acting as the Holy Spirit. It is everywhere. All right? So, right here, what does he do? He mocks God. But what is he wanting to do in this case? He, wanting, he wants to be above God. I believe it's at this point that he has realized his beauty. He has realized how powerful God has created him and maybe even in heaven he you're, you know like when certain people walk into a room like if, the, if a president walks in or a, a, a general to uh, down there at the base walks in all of a sudden everybody's like general's here I mean there's a great authority to these people I believe as Satan went around heaven there was great authority that was looked at when you saw Satan and he got in his mind they like me more than they like God. I'm going to be above God. And that's what the Bible's teaching right here, that he wants to ascend above God. He says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Listen to what he goes on to say. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Notice right there though. He can't be the most high, but he wants to be like the most high. You see that? 
Now, what is this about Satan that separates him from the Most High? The Most High created him. You see that? You can't be greater than your creator. And that's what God was. God was Satan's creator. God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. God is omnipresent. And, and yet Satan is not. But he wanted to be that. He wanted to overthrow God when in, hence what happened was God overthrew him. So now, number two, and that was number one. Where did Satan come from? He come from heaven. How did he come down to earth? By trying to overthrow God and now he now dwells among us. Number two, what does Satan look like? Now we've read some of this already. We've already talked about some of this, but let's talk about it a little more. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Y'all, this verse alone, you need to mark down, highlight, remember. Because notice what he says. Paul says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of what? Light. What is Jesus? The light of the world. Now remember what Jesus said? He said, I am the light of the world. And as a matter of fact, he says, and he puts that light inside of us. And then we teach our kids that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Come on, y'all. I don't know what he's saying. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bush. Oh, no. I'm going to let it shine. All right, so here's, here's what happens. Who is the light? Jesus. Who puts the light inside of us? Jesus. But who wants to be the light? Satan. Who's imitating the light? You see, that's what I mean right here. Some people say, oh, this, this has got to be a God. You better check it. You better search it. You better seek it. Remember, think about it. When Satan comes to Eve, and he says, oh, you will not surely die. God just don't, know, don't want you to have the knowledge of good and evil. God's holding back from you. You see that? It's at this point where Satan is using this, I'm a light, I'm good, and I'm going to help you. When what she don't realize is, I'm fixing to be destroyed. And I want to destroy my kids, my, my relationship with God, all these things. Satan comes to you in this light. But you know, there's a big difference in taking a flashlight and the light of the sun. It's a big difference. And Satan is only a flashlight. He can never be the light. As a matter of fact, he would rather operate in darkness that's why, I'll be honest, and y'all going to hate me right here, and I know it, I'm sorry. I don't like Halloween. It's, it's darkness. It's ghosts, and it's goblins, and it's, it's I know we do candy, you know, some people dress up as angels and all that. I get it, I get it, I get it, but here's the point. It's darkness. It's worked in darkness. That's what Satan likes to do. Notice when a lot of thieves and a lot of things like to do things in darkness. Friday night or Saturday night, downtown Columbus, there's certain parts of town you don't want to be. Why? Because of darkness. And that's where Satan operates. But he will transform himself to the light to make himself think of, I'm going to do something good for you. He will transfer himself in such a way that will lie, cheat. Jesus said he's a liar. He has been from the beginning. Right here, he is, once again, lying to us to hurt us, to destroy us. And But, but, if we are ignorant, if we don't know it's him, then what will we do? We will follow him. We will trust him. We will give him a chance. And then he will destroy us. Notice right here what the Bible says in Ezekiel 28, 12 through 14. This is what we've already read. But listen what the Bible says again. Son of man, take up a lamentation. Skip down to verse 13 again. He says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. We know that because Genesis tells us. Genesis 3 tells us that. 
It says, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou wast created. Now, I want to stop right there because I told you I want to talk about those pipes and tabrets. Those reference musical instruments, music. Now, if you are not reading out of a King James Version or even the New King James Version, it's not in your Bible. Matter of fact, has anybody in here got a different translation right now? What you got, Brandy? What's it say? Christian Standard. Pull up that verse right there. Verse 13. While she's pulling it up, here's what I want you to listen. Let's say, let's say, the, the King James Version is 100% accurate. I believe it is, and there's other reasons for that, and we'll talk about that another day. But let me say it like this. What if Satan is the angel of music? Did you find it? <laughs> she passed it over to Robbie, y'all. What if he is the angel of music? Now, I'm bringing all that up to a point because I want y'all to hear me good right here. Listen to what an article said about music. The impact and energy of music. The power of music stems from its capacity to move people emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. Music has an invisible but palpable energy that can change one's disposition and perspective. Now, while I was reading that article, I read other articles, and here's what it said. That they did studies and tests on people. And they took somebody, they did... And, and look, I'm not discriminating against any music. I know there's people that likes all kind in here. So I'm not picking on your music. I'm just telling you what was in the article. But they chose heavy metal. A heavy metal based type music. And they let these people listen to it for a while. And they said that these people were quicker to anger, quicker to be short-tempered, all these things. Um, now, then they played other music. Now, I know a lot of people love that music while they're working out because it says it gets you in the mode and gets you going and all that. I've heard a lot of people tell me that. I'm not a heavy metal person myself. I'm kind of a mellow fellow. I like old, I, I like that old country music, you know what I mean? I, I, but, but, think about this. Country music is not good. I got friends in low places. Ain't exactly a good theme song. You know what I mean? Hank Williams Jr., why do you drink? Why do you smoke? Why? Why? Because it's a family tradition. And what did it do to Hank? It almost killed him. What did it do to his kids? It's almost killed him. What did it do to Hank Sr.? It did kill him. So you're passing on generational curses, but you're singing like it's a theme song. And then you got other music and, and rap and, and other music. They said that uh, some of the other songs that they would listen to made them more out to be violent. Some of these songs, some of this music. Why? Because it stirs us emotionally and spiritually. Well, if Satan, if Satan is the angel of music, why wouldn't he use one of his strongest gifts to destroy us? Why wouldn't he? Notice what catchy tunes do to us. They get stuck in our head. I will never forget I went, when I was a kid, mom and dad, uh, matter of fact, I think back then it was, it was either Country 106 or Rooster 106. It was here in Columbus. And then there was 102.3. Those were the two country stations that I would listen to. I had a, My mama had one of them old stereos. Y'all know them things was that big. The speakers were that tall and all that. And, and I would have it tuned on that. And I'd just be jamming out. I knew every one of them songs. Well, then there was one song one day. And my dad asked me. He says, Jonathan, do you even know what you're singing? And I said, no, sir. I don't care what I'm singing. I just like that song, Dad. And I was a kid. And it was ignorance. It truly was. Well, then I got older, and I heard them saying songs, and I start playing them songs, and I, and then it's like, ooh, 
Is that what they used to say? Ain't it amazing when you get older and you start realizing what some of these songs are? I remember when I was a kid, Hotel California by the Eagles was a huge song. A lot of people loved it. But then it was being um, put out as demonic. You could check in, but you could never check out. All right, what is all these songs doing? They are leading people down a path of destruction. They are, they are sending them down this path of destruction. And what's also happened? It has stirred them emotionally. It has stirred them spiritually. And what is Satan doing? He is using his greatest creation, or, or his greatest talent, to destroy us. Y'all, I remember when I was a kid... When Christian contemporary music first come out, you know what all the people said in church right there? That's the devil. That's the devil's music. Don't you listen to that? That's the devil's music. I remember it. Back then it was either hymns or it was them old gospel songs. And you know what that is? That ain't nothing but country music with gospel lyrics. That's all that is. You ever listen to it? That's all it is. But, but when I was a kid and contemporary Christian music first come out, and to some people it still is the devil. Do y'all know when my grandma come here seven years ago, the one that died two years ago, she came here, and, and at the end of service, I went up to Dad. I said, Dad, how do you think Grandma liked it? He said, she loved it, but the music, she don't like them drums. That's what she said. That's what he said. You don't like them drums. You don't think them drums need to be in a church. But, but listen, music, that's what's happened. Music has been turned into this thing of evil by Satan. But music is also a beautiful thing. Y'all do realize that. As a matter of fact, I believe when we get to heaven, just like it says in Psalm, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And whether I can say or not, when I get to heaven, y'all better be ready. I'm going to be singing to the top of my lungs. Y'all hear me? I'm going to let it rip. But... but God loves music and he loves praise and he loves worship and he loves singing and lifting his voice on high, our voices on high in his name. Matter of fact, you know what hallelujah stands for? It's praise you Yahweh. Yah, hallelujah, praise is the hallelujah. Yah, Jesus, God, Yahweh, that's what it is. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. That's what we're saying. We're just saying it in English versus um, and hallelujah. You don't even know what you're saying when you're saying that, but that's what you're saying. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Yahweh. That's what you're saying. And God loves it. There's a whole psalm, the last two psalms. That's all it is. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Matter of fact, the book of psalms, many of them are songs that we actually sing and praise. David was a musician. God loves music. But Satan has taken music and he's used it to destroy us. And notice what the Bible says. Not John, what the Bible says. It says, The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day you were created. You see that? I believe with all my heart. We're going to have to end right here this morning. I believe with all my heart that Satan is using music right now to destroy us. Mom and Daddy, I'm going to tell you right now. You better check on what your kids are listening to. I'm going to tell you something else. You better be on the TikTok and the Facebook and all that. And all those little video reels, they attach music to it. Some of it is trash. It is garbage. Your child goes around professing they're a Christian and then there'll be cuss words galore in that. You need to check them, mom and daddy. And you say, yeah, but I don't want to hurt them. Better hurt them now than hurt them when they get older. Check them. Don't let them play that garbage. Attach some Jesus music to it. Y'all, I'm going to tell you this. We need to check our radio dials. We need to check the music we're listening to. You wonder why you're in a bad mood? Check the music you're listening to. You wonder why you're always on edge? Listen to the music you're listening to. I won't never forget, J93 said this. Uh, up here in uh, uh, Atlanta, you don't really pick it up, it's good right here. But y'all know J93, the Joy FM. They did a challenge a few years ago. I was driving back and forth to Atlanta every day. That's what my radio stayed on. And they did a challenge. It's called a 30-day challenge. They would challenge anybody from anywhere to listen to the Joy FM for 30 days. And if it didn't change your life, change the station. But if you, if you would give it 30 days, the power of God through these songs would change your life. 
and it did. There were people calling in every day talking about, I did your 30-day challenge and it changed my life. I surrender my life to Jesus Christ and now I'm a living, breathing Christian that I never was before and all I did was give God a chance. That's what it said. You Listen, one of the main things that we do nowadays is ride in our cars. Check our radio dials. Don't, don't give Satan a second of praise by listening to his creation of music and his destruction of music that's destroying our world. Let's praise Jesus. Let's praise Jesus in the car. I'll, I'll even challenge you. Change your radio. Put it on um, ground here. Caleb picks up real good, 90.5. If that don't pick up, then uh, out of Columbus right here, 107.7. Start listening to those stations and see if it don't change your life. See if it don't change your mood for the work day. It's what you put in is what you get out. You can't put garbage in and expect to get Jesus out. You can't do it. I will never forget a preacher many years ago. He took a backpack and he had the kids down here. And he, he said, what do y'all think is in this backpack? And they said, oh no. And all of a sudden he opened it up. There wasn't nothing in it. And then he said, well, let's put this and this and this and this in it. And he says, now what do you think is in this backpack? And he reached in and they all said, what you just put in? And they named it and he all of a sudden he reached in and he pulled it out. He said, what you put into your life is what you get out of your life. So what you're putting in in the morning, you want to know why you're ill before you get to work? What are you listening to? You want to know why you're ill while you're trying to fix something at the house? What's your radio on in the background? You all know the other day I had to help my brother fix his car. You know what I did? I took my Bluetooth speaker and I cranked up Jesus and I said, Lord, help us. And we laughed and we cut up and we got it done and, and it went smooth. But you know what? The tone was set around us through Jesus the whole time. We was blaring that Bluetooth speaker with Jesus. We were singing it. Then Dad come up. Dad started singing. It was great. But you want to change your mode and your mood and your tune? Tune in, Jesus. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning I want to ask you, do you know Jesus? If you were to die today... Do you know that heaven would be your home? And you say, Brother Jonathan, I know that I know that I know. Would you lift your hand all over the room? Say, I know it, Brother Jonathan. Praise God, I see them hands. Me too. Me too, amen. But maybe you sit right there today and you say, Brother Jonathan, I just don't know. I hope so. I think so. I've done some good works. Listen to me. The Bible says you can know so. Romans 10, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. The Bible says if we will confess with our heart, our mouths, and believe with our heart, you shall be saved. Right where you sit today, will you bow your heart, will you bow your head? Listen to me. Hosea 4, 6. My people. Who's, who's people? God's people. God's people that He created and He loves are destroyed because you don't know and you don't realize that Satan is trying to steal you away from this moment right now. From a moment where you surrender your heart, where you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Listen, you're not good enough. Neither am I. You say, I got to get things right in my life. I got to get some things together in my life. Listen, you can't. That's what Satan wants you to believe. You can't. Jesus can. Jesus will. You just need to trust Him. Seek Him. Follow Him. So, right where you sit, when you pray this prayer with me, something like it. But the main thing is, Pray it from your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I realize, Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, I'm even begging you, please forgive me of my sins. Lord, come into my heart and save my soul. Lord, I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. 
Anybody looking around, if you pray there, would you lift your hand? Anybody anywhere? Amen. Now this morning I want you to understand. We're going to talk about it again this morning next week, but I need you to understand something. The enemy is real. It's not the person you sit beside at work or school. It's not friends and family. Satan. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And he don't care. He don't play fair. But listen, if he can keep you from God, he's winning. If he can keep you from prayer, he's winning. If he can keep you from reading your Bible, he's winning. Lest he get an advantage of you, he's winning. If he can keep you from church, he's winning. Ain't it amazing when you're trying to get to church how hard it is sometimes? There's every obstacle in the world trying to keep you from going. But when we surrender to Jesus, we spread the love of Jesus, he's losing. Fighting that good fight, as Paul says. Don't give up. We're winning, y'all. We win. We just got to keep fighting. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, as we open this altar here in a moment, Lord, I know there are people in here that are struggling. Lord, I know there's things going on in our lives. And Lord, I know it's the word of Satan. Lord, I know there's doubt and there's fear and there's worry and there's anxiety. Lord, there's also to you. And Lord, we just need to get our eyes fixed on you. Lord, we need to seek you. Lord, we need to learn. Lord, we need to be willing to learn again. Learn about the enemy. Learn what he wants to do. Learn how he wants to destroy our lives. Lord, we just need to seek you with all of our heart and our mind and our soul. Lord, we love you. And Lord, we praise you. Lord, bless as we open this altar. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody's standing this morning.